Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's lesson, I'm going to show you how to create customer codes. We're going to create customer codes to hide your IDs from your customers. Bethany writes, she says, I'm using an auto number for customer ID. However, I don't want my clients knowing how many customers I have. If XYZ Corp sees that they have customer ID 15, then they know I don't have that many clients. The number 15, obviously. How do I give them a customer code that isn't dependent upon an ID field? Auto numbers really should only be used by access for internal use only, for doing lookups and for making relationships between tables. You shouldn't rely on them for anything other than this. Yes, in my courses, I tell you to put an ID for every table, and we put it on the customer form and on the order form, but that number really shouldn't be put on things that you give to your customers if you want to hide that information from them. It's like if you have a guest check and you only have one book and you give a customer guest check number 14 and he comes back three days later and he's up to 17, he knows you've only had three orders since then. It brings up something called the German tank problem. In, uh, in World War II, the Allies captured German tanks and they can tell from the serial numbers how many tanks the Germans were producing. I talk about this in more detail in my other video, Auto Numbers, Good or Bad. Look for that on YouTube. I'll put a link below. Anyway, certain information like customer IDs, order IDs, those kinds of things, you may want to hide from your customers. So how do we do that? Well, I've got a simple database here, and I've got customer IDs in my table, but again, these shouldn't be shown to the customer if you care about hiding that information. Some people don't, and honestly, to keep my classes simple, um, I teach my beginner students just to use this as a customer ID on the invoices. But when you get into more advanced stuff, and if you're, if you're to the point where you're a developer building software for other people, then of course you want to know how to do this. Now the trick is to keep the ID because we're going to use that inside the database. The auto number is the best type of field to use for making relationships and for doing lookups between tables. But it's only a number that Access cares about. You shouldn't care about it at all. Let me reiterate that. Auto numbers are meaningless to the user. You can show them to them if you really want to, but they can give away business information. Okay, so let's create a second field in here. We're gonna keep the customer ID. Let's create a second field, we'll call it customer code. Let's go to our table, design view. I'm going to insert a row right here. And we're gonna call it customer code. All right, let's leave this as text. That way we can have letters and numbers in it. Now I'm gonna make it so that you can type in whatever you want. If you want to give them a custom customer code, that's fine. But let's set a default customer code so that when I create a new record, it's going to give them a value. All right, what's that default value going to be? Equals, let's put a C in there for customer. And I like to use date timestamps because if you put the date and time in there to the second, then chances are it's not going to come up with a duplicate. You'd have to literally add another customer at the exact same time. So what I like to do is I like to put a date time stamp in there followed by a random number from like one to 100. The chances of two customers being added at the exact second and getting the same exact random number are infinitesimal. So we're gonna say format now, right now, and then whatever date time format you wanna use. I'm gonna go YYMMDD, that's year, month, day. Now this all depends on how many customers you add. All right, if you're adding dozens of customers every day, then you might wanna go HHNNSS, okay? Our N for minutes, remember that, HHNNSS, okay? If you only add one or two customers a day, maybe go to the minute, all right? Or if it's a customer every couple of days, just go to the day, that's all, all right? Now, does this give away business information? Yeah, but all it gives away to the customer is what day they became a customer. That's not really a big deal. Okay, so I'm gonna go year, month, day. Close parentheses, and then we're gonna add on a random number. Put in int, and then rnd times, how big do you want your number to be? I'm gonna go 100. That'll give you a number from zero to 99. All right, you can add one if you wanna go from one to 100. All right, enter. So the chances of you getting two customers with that same code with a, a random hundred, a random digit after it, random two digits after it, is very slim. If you need more precision, then add hours and minutes in here. Okay. Now this is the default value. I'm gonna set, um, I'm gonna set indexed to no duplicates. 
That way we can't have two customers in there with the same value. Now, required right now is set to no. We're gonna change that to yes, but you can't change it to yes if you got people in the table already that have missing values. So let's save this and see how it works first. Save it, close it, open it back up again. Okay, now look down here. These guys we have to put records in for, but down here, right, C, 20, 08, 06, that's today's date, 53. All right, let's put someone else in. Oh, look at that, there's 28, 77, 76. See, I mean, if you did a bunch of, if you do a bunch of these a day, then yeah, you might get two duplicates. Okay, so put as much precision on that as you want. But that's a nice, quick, easy way to assign a fairly random, kind of kind of random customer ID. Okay, now we're not gonna use this for any relationships. We're just gonna use that to show on reports. If you wanna print out an invoice, you can show them their customer ID. What's my customer ID? C2008, but that's your customer ID. It's nice and short, right? You can add seconds in there if you want to or whatever. Now you have to go back through and give these guys values. Um, you could do it with an update query if you want to. That's a whole separate video though. I've got videos on update queries. I'll put a link below. You can run an update query and change these to the same formula you use below. For now, I'll just put random letters in here just to get through class. Oh, can't put D in there. D's already assigned. All right, those are random customer codes. These are the ones we care about down here. Now I can go in and set required to yes. And that's it. That's how you set up a uh, data integrity rules have changed. Okay, that just simply means that we've made it so that's required. So it's got to go through and analyze the table now. Okay, now you just add this field to your form, which is pretty simple to do. Go to customers, design view, all right, copy, paste. I'm going to copy and paste the customer ID, put it right over here. Customer code. Change this guy to customer code. And don't forget to change his name too. There's the control source and the name. All right, the control source is where he's bound, what table in the, what field in the table he's bound to. The name is the actual name of this box itself. All right, and there's my customer codes. Okay, go to add a new one, and you can see there's a customer code in there already. If you wanna make sure, see that one got a five, and the one before it was 70. If you wanna make sure that that's a uniform field size, you can go and say, take this number. I'm gonna make this one more digit. So it's zero to 999. And I'm gonna say format, or excuse me. Yeah, yeah, let's use format, format, and then go comma zero, zero, zero. All right, I'm gonna put that in quotes too, quotes like that. That'll format that number uh, so it always displays with three zeros. All right, so it'll go zero, zero, five if you get a low number. All right, let's see. Go back. One more time. Let's take a look. New record. Okay. Might take me a minute to get a low a low value here. Let's see. I'm getting all high numbers. Give me something down below 100. There we go. Zero 15. <laughs> this will make sure it's always the same length. All right. So all of your your customer codes are the same length, and you'll want to reassign these. So Bethany, I hope that answers your question. Now remember. Don't show your customers their customer ID. You can show them that new customer code. You can use that on all of your reports and anything that the customer might possibly see. Now, when it comes to sequential numbering, I have another video on how to do sequential numbering. These are good for things like invoice numbers. I have another video on YouTube. I'll look for the link below. And for members, I show you how to do sequential numbering per customer. So every time you get, every time a customer gets a new invoice, it'll go 001, 002, 003 for just that customer. And that's a members only video. How do you become a member? Click on that join button down below the video. You'll see a list of all my perks that are available for silver members and above. You get access to the extended cut editions for my tech help videos. Now, I really didn't need to do a tech help extended video for this particular one because I showed you a lot of extra stuff in last night's video when I did the sequential numbering. Uh, we even did customer codes in that video too, a slightly different way. We based them on the first name and the last name. In last night's members only video, I showed how to make customer codes based on first name and last name. But thank you for watching this free video and don't worry, I'm gonna keep making these free tech help videos until I can't make them no more. I love making the videos and helping everybody for free. Make sure you subscribe to my channel so you get notifications whenever I release a new video. Click on the little bell there, ring the bell, and uh, pick all. You'll get an email notification for each class I release, for each video I put on YouTube. Also, stop by my forums on my website. I've got lots of stuff up there, too. 
If you want to see your question answered in a video like this, visit my tech help page and send it to me there. Look for me on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, of course. And if you haven't yet tried my free Access Level 1 class, it's free and it's three hours long, covers all the basics of Access. If you're still struggling, even if you've been using the Access for a little while, I, I know a lot of people who say, well, I've been, I've, been, I've been tinkering with Access for a few years and I finally took your class and wow, I, you know, there's a lot of stuff I didn't know. There's a lot of fundamentals, a lot of, a lot of things I put in there from my 20 plus years of using Access that will help you if you're struggling getting, trying to figure out how things work. And if you like level one, level two is just a dollar. Okay, that's it. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.